Josh Tesler joins to talk about Berkeley Catton, what makes him such an intriguing prospect, and would he be a good fit for the San Jose Sharks? Your Locked On Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen, probably part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day. If you want to be an everyday, all you have to do is just follow wherever you get podcasts or you can watch on YouTube as well. And today we are joined by Smart Scouting's Josh Tesler, uh, where we're going to be discussing Berkeley Catton. And if he'd be a good fit for the Sharks, we talk about what makes him intriguing, uh, strengths and weaknesses, where his timeline and development is. And then we get Josh's thoughts on the 2024 NHL draft. Uh, but before we get to all that, I do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. Use promo code LOCKEDONNHL to get a $100 match on your first deposit terms and conditions apply see sleepers terms of use for details and now we bring in a good friend of the show josh tesler uh the grand poobah head honcho uh (laughs) what dictator i've heard uh over at smart scouting i'm representing today uh scouting josh how's it going buddy I love it. Uh and uh thank you uh and thank you so much for having me on JD. Uh it's always a pleasure to come onto the show. Um and uh yeah, uh going um yeah, I am doing great and uh looking forward to talking about uh Berkeley Catton with you. Yeah, so we're going to be uh, talking about Berkeley Catton. Uh, if you're unaware of Mr. Catton, uh, Berkeley Catton is a five foot ten forward for Spokane and the OHL, 170 pounds, so short king uh, status, uh, 64 games, 50 goals, 56 assists, 280 shots on goal. And Josh, I ask, what makes Berkeley Catton such an intriguing prospect? Um, you know what? I'll try to be funny with this. He's smart. <laughs> smart. Um, uh, That's the brand uh, right there. Yes. Um, to, but like, you know, what, you know, what I was just telling you before, like he's so tactical. He's like, and he does a exceptional job of, you know, slowing down play um, you know, looking, you know, looking to draw pressure in to open up gaps and, um, you know, and that's, you know, and that's, I wouldn't say that's really hard to find, but like in a draft year, a player that does it consistently like shift in, shift out. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's, you know, that's not, you know, that's not usual. Um, and, um, you know, and in terms of his d- defensive play, um, you know, and his physicality, yeah, he's not a, you know, yeah, he's not overly physical, but he's got a extremely good, um, you know, reach. Um, mm-hmm. And that's come, you know, quite in handy, uh, you know, for poke checks at open ice and also, you know, and also along the boards. Um, And yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he's very, I mean, like, as I said, he's, he's very tactical, you know, he knows when to play more of a supportive center uh, role um, where, you know, he's, you know, where he's trying to provide his teammate, uh, you know, with an option to pass, um, you know, and so he's, you know, he's just a very, like, he, like, yeah, so he's, he's just very, he's just very smart, he, and, um, you know, and if, you know, and if he knows that, you know, he's not going to be able to get a, uh, you know, teammate in range to make that pass, you know, he, 
you know, he, he won't, you know, he won't force himself into pressure. You know, he will, you know, he will complete a, a draw pass. And I just, um, you know, and, uh, you know, in one of the last games that I watched a, a Berkeley cat and, um, you know, there was a, um, uh, it, there was a, um, I'm sorry, there was a, a great play up in neutral zone where he, um, you know, where he met his teammates, uh, I, I'm sorry, where he met his, his uh, where he met his forward teammates just right outside of the defensive zone, uh, perimeter towards the blue line provided, um, a, uh, you know, provided a support, uh, uh, passing lane and then drove, um, and then drove play up and then towards, um, you know, and then towards, uh, like medium danger, uh, at the interior face off hash marks, um, you know, drops a well time drop, drop pass, you know, uh, t- teammate comes up, up right behind him, um, you know, and, you know, and takes the shot and, you know, cat has got, you know, probably all, I think he had one, I think he had one or two, uh, attackers with him and not, you know, and not really a clear gap to net front. So, mm-hmm. you know, so instead of trying to force play in, you know, takes the drop pass, just, you know, just very, you know, just very aware of his, uh, his, uh, his surroundings, um, you know, and, uh, you know, and uses a lot of um, head checks to identify players, you know, especially for trying to read, um, you know, uh, optimal passing routes. So it sounds like <clears throat> the way you're describing, it, I think the best way to describe this game is a very refined game, especially for a 17, 18 year old kid. Uh, you know, like uh, we were talking before, where a lot of kids, they kind of like, once they figure out what works for them, it's a lot of like, I'm just going to keep hammering that because that becomes my bread and butter. So, uh, but yeah, it sounds like it's more refined game, especially for his age where he can kind of, whatever you need him to do, uh, he can kind of do that. So going forward, what do you think is going to be his like biggest strength? What's going to be that calling card that we talk about? Like, oh, this is what makes Big Cat a special type of player. Um, his deceptiveness, his ability to slow play down. Um, mm-hmm. that you know that as uh, I had said before is like, you know, you don't you don't see that shift and sh- shift out, you know, um, you know, for a lot, you know, for a lot of prospects in one, you know, in one draft class and, um, you know, and the puck movement that he, you know, that he has, you know, there's not like, it's not, you know, like there are options later on in, the draft, but like at, but like, you know, the risk, you know, of those players hitting versus cat and hitting, you know, the, the, you know, the risk versus reward, you know, I mean, like, you know, like I, you know, I don't know, you know, I would not, you know, I would not, you know, um, you know, I would not, you know, uh, you know, push, I'm sorry, you know, I would not, you know, push Captain further down. And so, but yeah, I just don't, yeah, I just don't see it. Like, you know, he's, you know, he's got exactly what I want. He's a dependable hockey player who I, who I can count on in, Mm -hmm. you know, in, you know, and comeback type, um, you know, um, you know, and t- and comeback type s- s- scenarios, and so, um, yeah, and so I just, yeah, and so I just don't like for us at at small. We have him. Pretty sure we have him at three. I'm not looking at the board right now, mm. but I'm pretty sure we have him at three. And uh, we're gonna be releasing the mid year rankings uh, at some point next week. And mm-hmm. uh, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure he is still at three. And we've got Macklin Celebrini at one and Demidov at two. Yeah, uh, you had him at four at your early rank because I just pulled it up. So, oh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, 
yeah no worries uh and yeah by the time you hear this he's probably your break it's probably coming out the same week uh so uh what do you think though is is gonna be the one thing he needs to continue to work on of course he's you know five foot ten 170 pounds uh so we know he's gonna have to continue to build strength muscle and that's every 17 18 year old kid but what do you think is the one skill he's really gonna have to kind of iron out as he continues his development um you know i i think you're gonna hear physicality being the knock on Catton, but mm -hmm. you know i think it's more about when to you know i think he's got to work on when to be slightly more physical and when to and when to rely on his po checking um yeah. and he kind of defaults to um to his po checking because that's his bread and butter and that's what he you know and it's clear when you watch him that that you know that that's what you know that that's what he knows what what works so yep. um you know i wouldn't mind seeing him be a little bit more physical but at the you know because you know it's you know because at the the next level you know, he's going to need to be, well, he's going to need to be a little bit more physical in order to, um, you know, I mean, because he, you know, because he's not going to be able to take down everybody, you know, with his, um, uh, you, you know, you know, with his poke chucking. So, um, you know, so players are definitely going to beat him, but, you know, but he does a great job of, you know, keeping pace um, you know, and, you know, and utilizing his reach in order to, you know, in order to tra trap players in low danger. So while he's not overly physical, you know, he does a good job of, you know, keeping them, uh, you know, in relatively low danger. All right, before we continue with Josh, uh, we talk about Berkeley Catton and where he would fit in with the Sharks, kind of his timeline, his development, all that fun stuff. Just need to take a quick break. Although the NHL season is almost over, you can still win big by playing daily fantasy hockey um, on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy hockey app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. All you have to do is just pick some of your favorite players, whether they're NHL superstars like McDavid, Crosby, or McKinnon, or some of your favorite San Jose Sharks like William Eklund, uh, Mikhail Granlin, or Clean Caution, uh, and record more or less in their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more in a given game. 20, 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to uh, correctly predict the outcome of eight player sets. You heard me, Sharks fans, you can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper to start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. All right. Uh, let's kind of talk more kind of bigger picture with uh, Berkeley Catton. So uh, I assume the timeline, right. It's going to be a couple years, you know, especially with the you know, CHL uh, NHL agreement. Probably another year to or two years at Spokane, and then you know some time in the AHL to kind of get that season before we see him uh, making an impact in the NHL. Or do you think he could be a guy who could be jumping to the NHL maybe sooner than we think? I could see a team trying to you know give him a few games next year, and mm -hmm. if it works, awesome. If he if he gets you know if he gets the pro level and it just seems like the transition is not going, you know, as well as he would have wanted to in that first NHL stint. You know, there's still a lot that he can, you know, draw off of and then go back to Spokane and, you know, and re, you know, and retool. Um, yep. But, you know, I, I don't think it's a, and I don't think it's a bad thing either if that's the approach that they go with because you know i mean like the sharks did you know something very similar with uh um you know with william Eklund, yeah william Eklund, um and you know and that you know and that you know and that did yeah and that 
and that that definitely served him well. Um, mm-hmm. So you know, I, um, yeah, I, yeah, I could definitely see him getting games next year. I just don't know if you're going to see a full year of him, uh, you know, at the, the pro level. But but, um, but, but potential Zach Benson, uh, two point yes. type of scenario. Yeah, uh, with him. And, Short King is just is really awesome at hockey. <laughs> yeah, and you know it, it's always easier having this conversation like right around like uh, like right around like the camps. Um, yeah, you know because like then you know you know because then based off of where he actually camp, is, all that fun practice, stuff. Yeah. You know you've got you know, yeah exactly. Um, but yeah, but I but you know I you know I could definitely see him getting games next year. I just don't, yeah. But as I said, I don't know if it's a full, if it's a full year. All right. Um, if the Sharks were to draft him, I know he's kind of in a, a little bit of a no man's land, assuming the Sharks are probably going to be the top one or two pick in this draft and whatever the, the Sharks, what happens with the Penguins pick. But, you know, in this scenario, we'll say he he lands on the Sharks. Um, where would you kind of sack him in the in the Sharks prospect play? I assume uh, Will Smith, whoever the Sharks draft uh, this year is probably going to be number one. You know, Will Smith is probably going to slide as number two. Uh, then you have like guys like Quinn Musty, David Edstrom, Phil Bisa. Where would he kind of slot in with some of these other forwards on the Sharks prospect pool? Um, uh, towards the top, uh, um, I'd say. Probably, probably in contention for one with Will, with Will Smith. I think, I think, skills wise, I probably give the edge to Catton. Um, mm-hmm. I Over just, Smith. Yeah, I just like um, you know, I think Catton's game is more well rounded. Um, okay. Um, you know, and he. Um, you know, and he's more of a two, he's more of a 200 foot guy, um, uh, than will, than, than will is, but that's, but that's not a knock on will. Um, and, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so why do you hate Will Smith? Boston guy hates another hate, Boston guy. Boston on Boston. I don't hate, <laughs> I don't hate <laughs> I don't. I'm but, just giving you a hard time, Josh. I'm giving. Yeah. You a hard time. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so you know, if sharks are kind of looking to kind, of, you know, as they're continuing to rebuild and adding these, these trying to add as many of these blue chip tie, kind of pieces, right? Uh, you know, we, we've seen the sharks trading away some big names like Tomas Hurdle. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, in the past two weeks, like. Um, what could you see Cat though kind of eventually if if he hits his ceiling be one of those like dudes right one of those guys where you can point to him like this is this is a potential game changer for the sharks yeah i uh, i do i think it also mm-hmm. like you know if you surround him with uh like i'm trying to get the, of the sharks prospect pool if you surround him with guys like quentin musty that uh that would be um that would be neat um <laughs> that would be really neat <laughs> yeah um uh try to think um you have like casper halton who they you know is at the the sniper yeah uh, they added like david edstrom who's you know probably gonna be more like a third line center uh for the sharks you have phil beasted who's probably gonna be kind of a middle six type of guy for him and um you know they've got some other guys that are probably go a couple years away but like you can see where like the sharks are yeah. they've been adding a lot of pieces in this forward group and i think you know, if you potentially have a one, two of Smith and and Catton as you're down the middle, um, that that seems pretty fun, right? Oh yes, oh yes, very fun. Yes, <laughs> very fun. Or you get Celebrity at one, and then that Penguins pick, uh, you yes. get Catton, and then we're then we're cooking with gas right there. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> All right, before we finish up with Josh, we talk about the 2024 NHL draft, uh, which players Josh likes, kind of discuss some of these forwards at the top, or these this long, winding road of defensemen. I just need to take a quick break. Did you know that even with a 401k for retirement, you could still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you can contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. 
But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. Now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations supply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the uh, date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. All right, Josh, uh, we haven't had you on to talk about the your thoughts on the 2024 draft. We mentioned Macklin Celebrini, who uh, feels very much like he's going to be the first overall pick this year. Um, maybe not as enticing as uh, last year's draft with Connor Bedard, uh, but Macklin Celebrini is going to be pretty good. But after that, it's a lot of questions, right? And it just kind of depends on your taste. So um, yeah. how do you personally round out kind of the top five guys here? You have so many kind of of defensemen which all you have questions you have some of these forwards which kind of have some questions how do you kind of uh wade through the top five so um so for my, my rankings i've got mac and celebrating at one i've got the demi dava two cat and three zeve buham at four and caden lindstrom at five um i um for ivan demidov um i very much like the player and mm -hmm. that uh, well actually can you cut that <laughs> i'm sorry um i like right. so like i i really like demidov and the challenge for me is like all so all year long i've thought well celebrini and demidov have incredible skill sets but yep. what i've seen out of demidov against junior hockey in russia is like he's just like he's just circling all over dudes and um and it at, at, at points it just seems slightly too easy for him and <laughs> i and when i'm trying to compare what i'm seeing out, out of demidov versus what i'm seeing out of macklin really comes down to risk versus reward um and certainty and um when the demodov has had samples of khl play it's been very inconsistent and so mm -hmm. at the tail end of his uh I believe at the at the tail end of his uh dy minus one um he had a short stint in the khl um, I don't have the point totals in front of me, um, but, um, you know, but he, you know, but he, you know, but he, he fit in extremely well. Um, you know, he, um, you know, he was, you know, he was creating scoring chances. Um, um, but you know, when he got some KHL time, I, uh, sorry, when he got some KHL time at the beginning of this year, um, you know, it didn't. You know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the same. Um, he got, he got hurt. Um, and so with all, and so with all that said, um, uh, SKA St. Petersburg had sent him back down to the, the MHL level. And, yep. you know, just based off of play style and, you know, sometimes uneven competition, um, you know, it's just, you know, it, it just comes back down to risk versus reward. And it's like, I really love what I'm seeing out of Ivan at one level, but yep. until I see it at the next level, that's what holds me back. And when I watch Macklin against, you know, uh, really good hockey East teams and d destroy them. And it's just, yes. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, how do I, 
how do I bet against Macklin at one? Like, I just don't know. I just can't. Yeah. Uh, Macklin's I've watched, uh, for personal reasons, I've watched a lot of Macklin celebrity this year and, uh, he's amazing. Uh, I'm again, uh, fingers crossed, uh, the sharks really need Macklin and Teal. So, but I think a big question for, for me this year is like the sharks are kind of still looking for that number one defenseman in their prospect, right? Pull in. There's a lot of defensemen kind of really clustered together, but they all seem to have question marks about like, well, if he does this, then he could be a top, uh, you know, a top defenseman. Or if this happens, yeah. or this happens. So, how do you try to kind of, you know, weed through some of these defensemen? And you know, I know you have Zibuyum as your top defenseman, but like some of these other guys, like Sam Dickinson, um, you know, Levshinov, like Parikh. How do you kind of, how do you kind of stack them up right now as we're, you know, uh, getting ready to hit the playoff season? So I, so in terms of my rankings at, at the moment. Um, not so, not the smart rankings, but my own. I've got personal Buell- Josh rankings, the dictator <laughs> rankings. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Buell at four, uh, Adam Yurichek at eight, Dickinson at nine, uh, Levshinov 11, and Anton uh, Siliev at 12. Um, what I, what I really like out of Zeev is he's he's got a very well well he's got a very well rounded uh style of play um you know he's extremely good with gap control um and his um you know and his puck movement out of um uh you know out of uh, sorry out of deep in his own has been you know has been great um you know he can you know he's you know, he is a reliable passer uh, along the point. Um, and, you know, his uh, agility, his, um, you know, and his, uh, and like, and his great puck handling just, you know, make him, you know, mm-hmm. a, a threat, you know, shift in, shift out. Um, and, you know, and for me, you know the fact that I can see someone who is doing a like is doing an outstanding job uh, with well, I mean, with constant well, sorry, with constant well, well-rounded play. I mean, yeah, for me, I just yeah, I mean, for me, I just take that to the bank. So, um, but then, you know, after Zeev. Um, you know, Adam Yurichek, he's, you know, not his brother. Um, yep. I was, um, you know, he's not as offensively gifted. Yeah. That's the word I'd probably use. Um, um, that, you know, that, um, you know, but the thing that I really like about Adam is, you know, you know, when it comes to defending the rush gap control, um, you know, and making the right passes out of the back end. Um, and then you've got Sam Dickinson, um, who, um, you know, who I, I really like the offensive skill set. You know, he's not, you know, he's not timid to, um, you know, to, to pinch up. Um, you know, and, you know, and, um, you know, and, uh, you know, and uh, identify those open nets, uh, sorry, and identify those open lanes to net, uh, sorry, to net front. Um, with Lev Shinov, I really like the upside. Um, mm-hmm. but for me, um, what's kind of held me back is his defensive play. Um, at times I just want to see a bit more tightened up, re, uh, refined, um, you know, he's, um, you, you know, it, um, you know, and I, I, you know, and sometimes his reaction time, uh, to, uh, you know, to, you know, to puck movement is just slightly delayed in terms of, um, um, you know, and, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of changing gears um, yep. and, 
Anton is incredibly fun to watch. Um, like when I've watched, um, you know, when I've watched him play in the KHL, he is constantly d- d- delivering, uh, you know, great hip checks or shoulder checks. He's got incredible speed for his size at, at six, seven. Um, and you know, I, there are times where his positioning could be somewhat suspect. So, you know, there is a little bit of cleaning up to do there, but Mm -hmm. at the, but at the same point, you know, it's gotten much better over the course of the year and um, you know, and it's great, you know, and it's great to see someone at, you know, his age, you know, figure out, you know, how to, um, you know, how to clean up some of that positional habits, um, you know, especially at the, the KHL level and grow. Um, and, you know, and, you know, and he's, you know, and he's a physical booming defenseman. And, uh, yeah. And then after that, I like uh, Alphonse Fry, uh, Zane Parekh, um, I, I, I have Fry at 15 on my board, uh, Parekh at 21. Um, so yeah, and then uh, uh, Carter Yakumchuk at t- 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 25, uh, and Noel Franzen right next to him. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so the, um, so yeah, so there's a yeah, so there's quite a few defensemen t- 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 in my um in my, uh, in my top 32 and, uh, and yeah. All right. We'll get you out here. Of course, the last two questions, uh, other than Macklin celebrating five years from now, who is the best player in this draft? Uh, best player in this draft. Well, if Demidov, I would say Demidov, um, I, so- I, very, it's a very common pick, so don't feel yes. Yes, uh, my like my, uh, I would definitely give Catton uh, a lot, a lot of praise though, because you know he's you know because like he's right there for me, like yep. he's you know like he's like the next player down. So, um, so while so while the skill set isn't always as flashy as what. I've seen from Demidov. Um, Not many people have as flashy skill set as Demidov either. Too, right? so. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, and for Catton, it just it just comes down to you know just you know just smart smart sorry smart uh, smart scanning. Um, you know, he's always um, you know he's always got a head on, on his swivel, and you know you know and you know, and reading, um, you know, and reading routes, um, and, you know, and, you know, and delivering well time passes. And so I, I, and so I just really love him, but it's just like, yeah, it's just like the flashiness that Demidov has. Like, I like Demidov so much to the point where I'm like, he, I like him more than Mavi Mitchkov, and mm. I like Mitchkov more than Catton. So, like, that's where, like, that's where my head's at. If I had to balance, I mean, I, uh, like, you know, if I had to, um, uh, you know, if I, you know, if I had to provide like a picture. All right, last question. Uh, I know we are middle of March, uh, but where does Berkeley Catton go in the draft? You got to give me a pick. That's hard, man. That's hard. <laughs> That's um, why it's the best question at the end. <laughs> it's gonna really come down to. Uh, yeah, it's really gonna come. Uh, uh if if only you ask me, like after lottery, um, five. All right, congratulations to the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, you just drafted Berkeley Cotton, Josh. Where can the people find you, buddy? 
They can find me at Josh Tesler underscore on Twitter uh, and um, at uh, and at smotscouting.com. And, uh, and yeah, man, thank you so much for having me on. It's always a blast. Um, and, uh, um, and I always enjoy what your listeners have to say in the comments. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah. And thank you so much. Uh, your check is in the mail too. So, uh, Josh, thank you so much, buddy. Uh, we'll catch, I'm sure we'll catch you again, uh, here soon. Of course, we'll have to have you back on for another, for a mid round madness as is tradition. So we'll catch you, uh, I'm sure as we get closer to the draft, buddy. Cool, man. And thank you so much, man. All right. Thank you to Josh Tusser for hanging out for a little bit. Uh, always good to have Josh on. So I'm sure he'll be on again. We'll do some mid on madness, uh, all that fun stuff. Uh, so make sure you guys are reading everything that I do over at Smart Scouting. Uh, great work over there. And it's free. No subscription. Uh, so go check out what they're doing over at Smart Scouting. Um, of course, you can follow the show wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, watch on YouTube as well. Uh, and you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. Follow me on Twitter at MyFryHole. Till tomorrow. Bye, friends.